Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 44. This training module we're going to be exploring doing a fuel tuning demonstration. So we're going to go through on an actual vehicle live with the vehicle. We're going to implement our closed loop fuel correction, both short term and long term. Explore our fuel injection timing tuning. Also taking a look at overrun fuel cut and transient throttle tuning all within the tutorial. So you can take a look at kind of the bigger picture of how to integrate the last few tutorials looking at our fuel modeling and our closed loop and all the other aspects for our fuel tuning. We have a lot to cover and talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at setting up and working with our fuel tuning process with our Haltech Elite on a vehicle. So this is gonna be a demonstration going from idle, cruise, and wide open throttle tuning, purely dialing in our air and fuel model here. Uh, we'll look at other aspects such as idle control and even spark timing in other tutorials. This is just gonna be trying to focus in on the last few training modules, going through a variety of different topics, diesel fuel cut, uh, we have our transient fueling, we have our injection timing, our closed loop corrections, uh, we have our main VE table for the airflow model that we're working with here. So we're gonna to tie together everything we've talked about and put it into kind of an order of operation so you can replicate the calibration process on your vehicle. So the vehicle I'm working with here is a bone stock 1996 Honda Civic. It only has a Haltech Elite that I've put into a jumper harness, a plug and play harness to plug into the factory wiring. Now I do have the AM Uego wideband installed on the car as well. I have that wideband into the OEM primary location. So I've replaced that factory sensor with the wideband and I've wired the Haltech into an analog voltage input coming into the Elite. This is gonna allow us to see what the wideband reading is doing and then we can utilize this for tuning process. So it's relatively simple to configure and set up. So let's go ahead and configure that first and then we'll move into taking care of some details that we need to prep in our calibration file. This file I'm working with here is a Haltech plug and play file for their plug and play harness for the 96 to 98 Honda Civic. Um, I've actually created my own harness and I've replicated what they've done on the majority of the pinouts to be able to um, just populate something relatively quick to film this vehicle. So I am using their base file. Sometimes some of the wiring isn't going to correlate. So they may have assigned something that I'm not using and uh, the, the pinout is assigned to something and it's thinking it's functioning, but it's not actually doing anything. So as we go through here, if we're seeing anything out of place, we might have to turn it off or reconfigure. Uh, but I, the majority of the vehicle has been uh, set up and configured already. So I've went through, um, I made sure the engine could fire up and run. I've checked the timing with the timing light, as we talked about earlier in the training course. Um, so everything on the vehicle is ready to be tuned um, in terms of going after our airflow model, but we do have things to take care of. So last little bit of details we need to configure before we do the actual tuning process. So let's take a look at that right now. The first thing I am gonna do here is jump up into sensors and we're gonna turn on our wideband O2 option and we're gonna set that up and make sure that it's reading properly between our gauge and coming in to the lead. Now, if you have a can based wideband, the setup is a little bit simpler than what we're gonna show right here. Um, but you'll find you don't have to worry about any discrepancies between the gauge display or the reading and what's coming into the hall tech. There'll be nothing to create a voltage offset. When you're wiring in a zero to five volt, there might be a voltage offset, but we need to check that. So that's what we're going to check here in a second. Let's go to our wideband O2 and let's go in here and we can see here we're going to have it enabled. So we want our sensor one to be enabled. Position, we can keep it overall. You could also have unassigned. Um, we don't want to go and assign it to a bank or a cylinder in this case. So overall or assign is what we can choose. I'll leave it on overall. And then the input type here will be a analog voltage for my wideband I'm working with. Yours may be a CAN controller if you're working with the Haltech CAN based wideband. Let's do a quick reboot. Now here we need to go into the wiring and go ahead and assign the wiring pin that I've wired my 0 to 5 volt output from my Uego gauge to the Elite. So I'm gonna go here to assign, and I've actually assigned that to AVI1. That's where I've wired it to. So we can see that's available right here. Let's click OK. Let's do a reboot. And then if we jump in here to our sensor one, we need to go and check the calibration scale. My Uego wideband happens to be this default scale that they're working with here. So zero volt, 10 to one air fuel, 20 to one air fuel is five volt. We can see that's again right here. Now what we wanna do here is, after we've set this step up here, we wanna make sure we're going in and we're checking what the gauge display reads. If you have an analog voltage wideband, 
and to what your hall tech is showing here for what, for the air fuel reading. I'm seeing 15.1 here on my display that we can look at right here in the software, and I'm seeing about 15 to 1. Um, yeah, about 15 to 1 on the gauge. So there's about a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 air fuel difference. That's completely acceptable. If you're finding a larger deviation or difference than that, you may have to go in and reground the wideband to a different location. There could be the ground point causing a voltage offset, creating a problem, and we want to make sure that what you're seeing on the gauge is displayed here in the software. They need to match within 0.1.2 air fuel. So in case, in this case here, I'm 15.1 and the display is 15.0. Close enough. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is some prep work to our calibration file to allow us to go in and do this process. A few things we want to go do out right off the bat here. First thing, we want to go into our fueling. And we want to go down here. Scroll down here a little bit, and we're going to go into our fuel tuning, and we are going to go here into our injector information. Now, they are high impedance injectors, factory uh, D-series injectors. The flow rate here is, um, they're showing 220 cc per minute. They're about 220, 240 cc per minute. I'll leave it at 220. Uh, the dead time here, these are the values that Haltech placed for the dead time. They may or may not be correct. We can validate if they're correct or not and fix them as we fire up the engine at idle. We know how to do that using our Excel spreadsheet. I have that open down here. The firing angle is something we want to change. Now we talked about injection timing and we talked about knowing your uh, cam card information and knowing your intake opening and closing valve events. Um, being able to put that into that, the spreadsheet and be able to give you a value to kind of start off with here in the table. I have no idea what these cam specs are going to be. So I'm going to just put a value here of 360. 360 will be good to dial any engine in and get the process started. Now you could use the Haltech default, default values, but 360 is what I'm going to go with. That's typically what I do when I have no idea um, the cam details about the engine. We'll start at 360 and then we can fine tune that as we go on. So that is one aspect there I want to go take care of. Some additional things under engine function here. Um, I want to make sure that the D cell, it's going to be under D cell here, let's go down a little bit. The D cell uh, we can see that it's on right now, and we definitely want the D-cell cuts to be active, but we want to actually disable it for the time being so that it's not going to create any issues as we're trying to dial in the very light lift throttle overrun areas. So this is not going to shut the injector down there, and uh, we'll kind of see how that's going to go here. I am on a mainline chassis dyno doing this tutorial, so sometimes very light throttle or D-cell situations may not go exactly as planned. Uh, the dyno doesn't do super well as you're kind of unloading the engine and coming into overrun, coming back into idle. Um, it keeps the hub spinning, which can create a higher idle, kind of an idle offset as you're coming down to idle. And um, I don't want the D-cell fuel cut doing anything goofy here. So I'm just going to shut it off for right now. I would suggest you turn it off as well when you're doing your calibration process and turn it back on and then experiment a little bit with the values. We'll talk about some reasonable values to place in there and just test it once we're done with the main fuel table tuning, getting all that dialed in our V table. So the D cell we want to shut off. We want to go in and change our injector, uh, injector timing, 360, or if you can have your cam card information, you can use the Excel spreadsheet here as we talked about. In our training course under injection timing, we can- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later